Then tell me when it seven. Okay. Good evening and thanks for coming back again. Um, so you can see between now and last time we talked, I've added a bunch of stars. Not much else, but mostly they're down at the bottom because when I paint the bottom in, I don't want to be adding stars afterwards around the shapes. So a lot more need to come in, but for now at least, you know, <laughs> I'm ready to paint today, surprisingly, because it looks very colourful. But today I'm mostly going to paint in black, grey and white. White for the stars, black for the shapes and... Find my paintbrush. Grey for the highlights on those shapes. Illuminated by the night sky. Um, and I'm going to use the sketchbook, the painting in the sketchbook as the guide. So I'm going to basically copy what I did before. Uh, How did you do the big stars also that looked like they'd been sprayed? They were done with a little squirt of, from the airbrush. Mm -hmm. So nothing else was, but they were. I don't know what I'd have done without an airbrush in that case though, because it's um, yeah, it would have been quite tricky. Is there a method for kind of painting light emitting sources? Well, there's a problem. 
and that is that um, it's not in the same color balance as everything else it's vastly brighter so everything else has to be significantly darker in proportion if I was painting a daylight scene against say an evening or morning sunlight I would um, subdue the color of the sky a lot so where the light hits something a tree or a rock typically it would look much brighter than the sky which is how it would do but it's it, I'm afraid light is something I'm spending a lot of time learning Would you be able to remind everybody what this painting is for? What it is? Ah, this is a painting for uh, the Downs Braid Association album, Celestial Songs. Very celestial. <laughs> Indeed, it is. And it was fun doing it. You can't see it, but you know, if you come right in close, the texture that's left by the paint is great. I love that. So I've been enjoying working on this. How many coats is that, Roger? Coats of colour? Mm. How many times did you let it dry and then do something else? Uh, I didn't. I only did that for the primer, primer, you know, the uh, basic white underpainting. For the rest, it was, um, yeah, I worked into areas. I mean, I didn't use a green, so the green is basically a thin blue, but I didn't thin the blue. I just worked it thin with the paintbrush. Listen to the music of the album before you make the cover. No, I haven't. Um, Chris sent me the songs and they're fantastic, but um, yeah, I don't have them in an easy format to listen to. That's probably my fault for not being more tech savvy, but there you go. Well, it's it's a dirty splodge at the moment. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. All the the albums I've done for uh, Dan's Braid Association before have been watercolours. So this is the first acrylic painting I've worked on for them. But uh, I'm enjoying the process. And I like the fact that the, what can you call it, the constellations, the dust clouds, whatever, are very vivid. I looked through lots of examples till I found one that was in the same colours. Do you always do lots of like real world research for your paintings? A lot, yes, but not always. But obviously constellations weren't something I had in my files from my own experience. So the launch of fancy new cameras, fancy new telescopes has been good. 
have enjoyed that and thought, wow, wonders to come. Have you ever hidden any Easter eggs in your work? <laughs> well, can't answer that really. Not specifically Easter eggs anyway. Um, people have found things in my paintings that I intended and I, people have found things in my paintings that I had no idea about and absolutely didn't intend. Is there any news on your next art book? Well, it's virtually finished, so I really have to get my act together and wrap it up and get it printed. So um, I'm really going to try very hard to get it out for the summer. So it should be published in September. That is, there's no reason apart from my own lack of focus for that not happening. You've been asked what brand of paint this is. Yes. <laughs> well, I will say, um, mostly these days I use golden. It's, um, I've just shown one. Sorry? I've just held one up. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Product placement. Yes. There you go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what I use mostly. And it's, um, it works very well for me. I like it. It's, there are gaps, whatever paint you use, and the gap with golden, which there, uh, Gradually filling is the range of blues that were available. So for a long time I had a few blues from other makes amongst my palette. Do you ever use masking techniques? Um, yeah, I do occasionally. More often when I'm doing something very formal, like a logo or something, rather than a painting. But even with paintings, I've used them occasionally, yeah. Do you ever get nervous just painting black onto your beautiful <laughs> hours of work background? wouldn't matter what colour I was painting, <laughs> I could still ruin it, theoretically. But if I ruin it quickly, I can wash it off. So it's, <laughs> it dries quickly, but I can wash it off. Have you ever mm. thought of developing and selling your own brand of paints and art supplies? No, I haven't, because I don't really have a skill set. You need to know a great deal about the chemistry of the paints, a great deal more than I know for sure, to do that. Yes. I can understand why you asked the question, but it isn't really a logical step. You could think, well, I wonder if Lewis Hamilton has thought about making his own brand of cars. <laughs> it's, it's not an inevitable step. But I do know that lots of people who do cooking on 
television did their own food brands so you can go into supermarkets and buy various things made by them but what you can't do is buy a cooker made by them <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess yeah no I've not thought about it I've been very frustrated by when types of materials that I really love using cease to be available I, when I was in early years on leaving college and even when I was at college I used um, a, a line paper mounted called CS10 which was fantastic brilliant for doing ink drawings but that disappeared decades ago and one of the other things that's really exasperating is that a lot of the inks that Victorians use were very stable, but their modern equivalent are not so. At least especially in the 60s and 70s and early 80s, the available coloured inks, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend them for stability. And it's so long since I've even thought of using them that... Uh, I don't know what modern inks are like anymore. They may be the same or they may be much better. Have you heard of an artist called Toby Joy Smith? Called? Toby Joy Smith. No, sorry. Is that Toby asking? No, there's an RIP, so I don't think so. Apologies. Oh, no. What did he do and where did he work? Let's throw the question back. More info about Toby Joy Smith, please. Have you ever worked with other artists on, on a painting or a canvas? Strangely enough, I'm working on a project now which does involve paintings I did with other artists a long time ago in the 70s um, <clears throat> and I did the drawings and they did the paintings and I worked with three artists like that Mike Emden um, Tim White and Richard Clifton Day all of them brilliant artists and, and yeah it was an interesting project but I have been asked specifically if our work on the same canvas with another artist showing out the real estate of the canvas and um, I've been ducking and diving and avoiding that because I don't really know how to do it but I'm going to have a shot at it Ooh. so the answer is I've played around with the idea several times I'll, pro I'll play around with, that, with it some more be interesting to hear how that goes. Oh, I won't keep it secret, don't worry. <laughs> I've often wondered when authors co-write a novel, how they, how they do that. Do they take it in turns to write every other word well, or one chapter? One story, one checks the spanner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that does. <laughs> Uh, what happens to your original paintings, Roger? Well, from time to time they get exhibited. They are currently being exhibited up the road at Trading Boundaries. When I say they, maybe 30 of them. Um, I've got a bunch going to America this summer. So I pretty much have exhibitions. I don't think there's been any time in the last few years when I haven't had an exhibition somewhere. And some get sold, so, excuse me. Yeah. Have you ever approached a band uh, to do their artwork or do they always come to you? Um. I don't recall ever approaching them. It's, yeah. 
but there's lots of bands I would like to have worked with and I never have, so maybe I should have done that more. Send them a calling card. <laughs> um, Have you been working on ideas for your Roger Dean Art Museum Sculpture Park? Yes. Simple answer, yes. Mm -hmm. w working on ideas, talking to people, trying to find a site. So, all of the above. What's this going to look like? Is it going to be theme park, sculpture rides? No, not really. Um, I guess I should put something up on the website, some of the drawings. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. I can see already that um, I was not very accurate in anticipating where the stars should be. Oh, well, say la vie. So I think Toby Joy Smith was a British acrylic artist. Um, who was very inspired by Mexico and developed a unique technique of painting using impromptu application of texture by external element pressure with sponges, crumpled newspaper and plastics. Oh. Very original. I should have known. I, yeah. Um, yes. Sometimes it's very embarrassing how little I know. It's <laughs> true that way. Oh wow, Ghibli Land is opening this year in Japan. Will you visit? Which is? Ghibli Land, I assume Studio Ghibli Land. Oh, would I visit? Absolutely. I, I went to the Ghibli Museum well, five or ten years ago and I absolutely loved it. So if they're going to open something bigger and grander, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love it much more than Disney, so I have to say. And they're going to do it this year. Apparently so, I didn't realise. No. Sounds amazing. Well, I have contacts in Japan, and I wonder why they <laughs> never told me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you should speak to them about that. I should. Yeah, I did, when I went to the, the Ghibli Museum, I was really impressed about how it was. It was excellent, a really great project. How close did the Maidstone Hotel get to being built? I don't really know, but um, the person we were dealing with was a friend of Rick Wetman's, Alan Bowers, and um, he was the chairman. And he was very keen. And fortunately, when we went to see Maidstone Council about it, they were very keen too. So there was a point around then that I thought it was likely. Um, we had costings done by two firms of um, quantity surveyors and the costings look really promising so altogether they had the resources the council was in favour it looked likely what happened though and I feel really sorry for Alan he was a victim of a, of a kind of boardroom coup d'etat and um, the funding people, the people who've been putting the mon money 
into his expansion and he grown the company very rapidly well he was the boss the funding people backed one of his other directors in a different direction so he was ousted and sadly we talked a while a lot after he left but he didn't have the clout of that company behind him so we never did anything together in the end i'd have liked to it was very exciting time How did it come about that you did the artwork for Anne Wilson album? I got a letter from her manager. <laughs> well, there we go. So, not complicated. And if someone wanted to approach you uh, for about putting on an exhibition, do you, do you have an agent? How would they approach you? Um, well. I have agents in different parts of the world, but if they just wrote to my website, um, we could put them in touch with whoever they need to be in touch with. Are you going to do more NFTs? Am I going to? Mm. They're very problematic, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of issues about the amount of energy they use, and it's quite possible to make them without that issue of using energy that could be used for something else. Um, in Iceland, they're doing a lot with vol the volcanoes there. So from the point of view of making them, Iceland is brilliant in that it both has unlimited amounts of energy from the volcanoes and because it generates a lot of heat in the making of these, it has the cool temperatures to keep the, the machines cool while it's happening. So Iceland's a very interesting place because you don't have the issue that even if the energy is green, you're taking it from another use. It, that's not the case everywhere, and certainly not the case in Iceland. But I think I'd like to see a different solution to that before I got back into it. Although I did enjoy it, and it was fun, it was interesting. So I, I would say, yeah, watch this space. And do you specifically produce a painting for a band or do you have a catalogue of work that they can choose from? Well, usually I do it specifically for their, what they need. But ever so occasionally, particularly as it happens with Anne Wilson, um, when a manager contacted me, the issue about doing a painting from scratch arose, but I couldn't do it in the time they needed it to be done. The only way I could do it that quickly is if something that I'd done before, something that already existed, would work for Anne. And apparently it did, so that was good. Yeah, that was a very, very brightly coloured album. And um, my understanding is that it will be out in April. But and what's the title of your new book going to be? It's the same title as Freya uses on her blog, which is The Secret Path. So that's what we're going to do. Great.
I'm being asked about my painting, Roger. Well, I've got to tell you, if you're asking about Christabel's painting, she came prepared. I can't believe people remember. I, I came prepared. What should I, should I do? I'll show you. Oh no. Oh, this is the first painting I've ever done. <laughs> it's a red panda. Because they'll not know what it is. It's great. You heard it here first. It's great. <laughs> apparently. Better than my first painting. <laughs> which was a badger. Oh, yeah, but weren't you like seven, Roger? No, I was 12. Oh. So I must well. have done plenty before. First one I could, that I still have a record of. <laughs> the first one you kept. Well, I would have kept them all, but my dad being in the army and was travelling around all over the place, that was not easy. Any I did in England was easy because my grandmother kept them. But any we did while I was travelling, I guess we just lost them. Thank you for being nice, everyone. Everyone was nice. <laughs> oh, someone's first painting was of Iron Maiden's mascot. That's quite cool because I did a. Freddy? Yeah, I did a drawing of that when I was a teenager. Ah, were you uh, a big fan of the band? I was quite a big fan. Oh, we're going to go uh, profound here now, Roger. Do you believe in an afterlife and a true spiritual realm? <laughs> in seven words, no, I'm joking. There's no word limit. <laughs> <laughs> Do I believe in an afterlife? I, there's no question it would be nice to, be, to believe in an afterlife, wouldn't it? It would be nice. I don't not believe, let's put it that way. That's a lot different to, I, to the way I see it is there's just simply too much we don't know. Very true. I do still like Iron Maiden too. Do you like Iron Maiden, Roger? I do, yeah. I guess they're in the sort of that heavy rock area. My favourite band is Led Zeppelin. That's my favourite band too. <laughs> We've never had this conversation. Oh, well, there you go. Wow. Do you ever see Alan Lee, Roger? I haven't seen him for a year, but about a year ago I went and visited him. Where's he based? He's based in Devon. Oh, lovely. And the same house he was in when I first visited him, which would have been early 70s. So, yeah, lovely guy and a brilliant artist. The colour you're using, is that a black or is that a mix? No, it's, um, it's a straight out of the tube black, Mars black. I 
I do prefer the richness of blacks mixed with multiple colours or three primary colours. But they tend to work best for me when they are transparent. So this is an opaque black. Do you have a preference for synthetic or animal hair brushes? Sorry? Do you have a preference for synthetic brushes or animal hair brushes? Um, well, I hate to say it, but I think um, animal hair brushes do work better for watercolour. Oh dear. But all these are synthetic. What, what animal's hair do they use? Is it ever defined? <laughs> it was just yes. generic animal hair. You don't go in and ask for animal hair brushes. You ask for, I think it's squirrel. Oh. So it's kind of heartbreaking, isn't it? It is a bit. Uh, have you got any recent good audiobook recommendations? Have I got any audiobook recommendations? Bloody hell, it's a difficult question. <laughs> I was asked that last time, wasn't I? I think so. You did say what you were listening to most recently. Yes, I finished that. And I've been reading a book, um, which in the end is, I find frustrating. But it's a book on artificial intelligence and it's set in 2041. Um, two Chinese authors, one focusing on the science, one writing stories. But it, I mean, it does address a lot of the artificial intelligence issues that there are, but I think it misses the point on some. Um, so, I don't know if I would recommend it. Yes, if you're interested in the subject, it should be one of the books you read. But I think it's a book with some faults. Were you surprised to get the call about the cover for Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe album? That was a long time ago. Was I support surprised? Yeah. In a way I was because it came from John. And um, we both spent time in the southwest and deserts in, in the US. And he was particularly enamored of uh, a tribe that was extinct at the moment, although there's a lot of re uh, traces of them in the buildings they made and so on called the Anastasi. But we were both interested in it and so we had a chat and yeah. So when was that now? It must have been about 1988? I can't remember. Wow. Long time ago anyway. Yeah. Too long ago to remember if I was surprised. <laughs> Are you familiar with the band Rhapsody of Fire that Christopher Lee narrated on some of their albums? No, no, it's a good name. Rhapsody of Fire, is that the, the like, because Christopher Lee had a death metal band 
Is it that band? Question for the audience. Yeah, I don't know the answer. Rick used a bunch of very good uh, actors on his albums. Brian Blessed. For um, what? For playing guitars? Brian Blessed on guitar, <laughs> Rick Wakeman on keyboard. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> what a band. <laughs> yeah, I think he uh, wouldn't, he would only let Brian Blessed play Henry VIII, I think. <laughs> <laughs> At least he did the diet, the, the commentary. I saw that live at um, Hampton Court. Quite an evening. Wow. I haven't really anywhere near finished what I'm doing. But I'm going to start adding some highlights. So this is a grey that I'm going to be using. And this is mixed. But that won't show up because it's when they're opaque colours, they tend to flatten and you don't see through them to the other colours. Are you the copyright owner of the classic Yes logo? Um, well, I was, but now co-owner. Joint custody. You have it alternate weekends. Yeah, but you... Yeah. How do you co-own a logo? The copyright. Uh, I don't know if it's that complicated, really. You have an agreement. The original agreement I had over that was brief. I think it was half a page of text and all over the rest of it signatures. So it was a very simple agreement. Do you still paint on hardboard? I do, although um, this is much easier, much lighter, but I do occasionally because um, I have a bunch that are still primed or semi-primed hanging around, so, you know, it's, they're here, it's easy. And what makes you decide one or the other? Will of the moment, really. Do you stretch and build oversized canvases like this one? No, this one is off the shelf. Um, what I do do, because in England, you, a lot of the manufacturers don't do six foot by four foot canvases, which I love painting on. The metric equivalent is a couple of inches out either way and that just would be too irritating for words so i get them made up and i must admit whereas i do feel lazy for having done that i do love the ease of it so yeah that's how it is at the moment Which of the Yes stage designs was your favourite? Um, well, all of the main ones, the main ones being 
Teos and Typographic Oceans and Relaire and um, the last one being the uh, oh, what was that 2004-3-4 stage um, my brother mostly did the Relaire one but yeah one of the tragedies of that is there's no one has got any film footage of those stages and they were brilliant mm. um, so I, I wish I had that I wish it existed basically mm. so no one ever filmed them they did yeah okay but I do remember the tales um, film crew were around at the beginning um, beginning of the American tour I mean rather than the UK tour so hmm no fun to do So this is sort of working as a highlight. I'll tweak it and play with it a lot more, but it is definitely kind of working. What's the status of the Floating Islands film? It's <coughs> a lot of these projects take a, have been taking a great deal longer to put together than I could have ever imagined. <coughs> um, it's not been cancelled. It's still being actively pursued, but not much has happened since the beginning of COVID on that. Ken Crabtree has read that over 60 million copies of your artwork have been sold. Do you agree with that figure? Well, that figure came about in the... Um, Ah, end of the 70s and because of other things we did in the 80s I, I have no idea because back then accounting wasn't done on computer so to a large degree everything is a guess but yeah there were um, we did do an enormous number of sales in the early 80s and we calculated it was much more much more than a hundred. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a hundred million. That's pieces. And that's including prints and copies or? Yeah, it's including cards. And one of the yeah. things that really pushed the numbers up for me were British Telecom did a telephone card and they sold 16 million of those in a very quick time. Wow. 
Roger, we're just, uh, just past quarter two, in case you haven't seen the time. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I've just been told, <laughs> and keeping you all up. Not to bring this to an, an end or anything. Okay. Well, I'll be back pretty much where I've left off this time next week. And thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Or close-ups of details. We'll post a picture, will we? Yes, we said we would. Yeah. We'll, we'll post a picture. Oh, have you switched it off? Not yet. Okay. Let's do a close-up. Also, the beginning of the video had a close-up. Show, show the colours from as close as you can get. It's like being in space. <laughs> Good. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.